Hi there, welcome to Farming in Africa and my name is Fred, a livestock farmer in Ghana that is on the journey to revolutionize livestock farming in Africa as a whole. Over the past two to three years, my company has invested almost a half a million dollars into South Africa. And therefore I'm doing this video to show an appreciation to the Ghanaian government number one, to the South African government and to the South African embassy in Ghana for creating the opportunity for youth and businessmen and agriculture enthusiastic people like myself to be able to go to South Africa free without a visa. I'm saying this because of the hassle that I've been through for the last three months. So before June, when the government of Ghana and South African government established this uh, new deal, my passport was actually locked at the South African embassy for about six months. That was the longest that my passport has been held by any embassy. And why? As I said, over the past two, three years, my company has been investing in South Africa just on agriculture. You might ask me, how can you guys invest such a huge money in agriculture in South Africa? What we've actually been doing is importing livestock. As you know, South Africa has taken the lead and has the best genetic when it comes to goat breeding. We're talking about the boa goats, the savannah goats, the Kalahari that are bred purposely for their meat. These goats originated from South Africa and therefore are the original source of it. And that is why we are bringing these goats from South Africa to West Africa right and these goats are not cheap we're buying high quality goats some from ocean some from registered um, stood breeders some from farmers themselves that are breeding these goats and flying them through south african airways into ghana into other african countries and that hasn't been very cheap we were doing this business i remember going to south africa about three years ago to really meet with the, some of the breeders and establish this contact since then we have imported i think about more than 10 consignment into various african countries without meeting these guys again and therefore business as you all know has its own challenges last year i decided to go to south africa reconnect with my breeders reconnect with my logistic team reconnect with all the processes that we have to go through because it's been a slight changes in um, the process as well and little did I know that it was going to take me six months for me to get my visa. My passport was locked down. I had trips to the US that I had to cancel. I had a trip to Nigeria that I had to cancel. I had a trip to Kenya that I had to cancel. All this cost me a lot of money. And then finally, to realize that now Ghanaians can travel to South Africa for free. A lot of farmers in West Africa have received a breakthrough through this initiative that we started about three years ago. And here is a gentleman that I want you guys to hear from his own mouth. I have with me here Mark Jordan. He also has a share in this consignment. So everybody has been on the edge and they are kind of happy and very excited that the animals have arrived safely. Hi, Mark Jordan. Hello. I understand this is your second time. Yes, our second time. Already. But I would want you to take me to the first time you purchased from us and what informed that decision. Take us back to the backstory you have. Yeah, so the little backstory I have is uh, this is something that we've always wanted to do. Okay. And then I've had experience reaching out to South African breeders myself. Oh. But then it's like, you may want like two or three goats, right? Or let's say four. Yeah. But then it's like, when you reach out to the breeders, what the breeders tell me is, uh, what one of the breeders told me specifically is like, people do reach out from Ghana, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, stuff like that. But then. We reach out for two and three goats, but it's not worth it to fly Definitely. two goats from South Africa to here, right? So yeah. uh, it'll be good if we could pull our order yes. and then order in bulk, right? Yeah. But then when you're in your own little corner, it's hard to do that. So yeah. when Fred showed up and he was doing something like that, you know, we just thought it would be the right time to uh, get on board and also get what we want. So it's great what you guys are doing here. Well, you heard Mark Jordan when Fred showed up. There was a breakthrough. If you are out there in your little corner, there is only so much you can do. You heard him. He contacted South African breeders himself just to order to fly them. The whole logistics involved, no, it's not worth it. And so that is why farming in Africa is here. We pull all the resources together. We go to all the African countries and the people who have shown interest in, in purchasing these foreign breeds. And then we bring them in bulk to even lessen the cost for you. So I'm interested. What's what brings you back the second time? 
What brings us back is, uh, okay, so specifically for our farm, we had like uh, one male and one female oh, okay. the last time that we ordered. Okay. And then we are looking to scale this year. So uh, we just got two additional, and then we're looking to, uh, at ways that we can cross them with uh, the local ones that we have. So uh, we're also experimenting on our side, but you know, we just thought like getting two more okay. will help, well, at least with the financial capacity that we have now. I like what Mark Jordan said. He said they are looking to scale this year. I think the last question I have for you before you leave me right now is you already purchased first two. Mm -hmm. How has wearing them been like? Is it, how different is it from wearing the local ones? Well, of course, our uh, first thing is like the financial application is way different, right? So we are extra, extra careful. Yes, yes, and then we want to make sure like we have all the medications and yes. stuff that um, we need to have and also have our schedule down yes. and also like have veterinaries. We have like two of them that oh, that's great. on standby just yeah. so like if anything that we need someone to take a look okay. at immediately. So yeah. it's just like being extra careful, uh, first of all, so you don't lose your investment. And as yeah. compared to the local ones, if you lose one, you can buy another one tomorrow, <laughs> right? So yeah, we're just being extra careful and it's also teaching us like all the processes that we need to go through, right? So at least if you have this one down, it will also be easier because you know what to do uh, as far as like ghost farming in general, right? So yeah. when you're taking care of the local ones as well, yeah. uh, you know the ins and outs. So we are still learning, but I think we're getting there. We are still learning. I said it was the last question, but no. You mentioned medications. Do you get them from us? Yes, we, uh, the last order we got some medications. Oh, so. the last order you got some medications. What about this order? This order... Um, not uh, yet. Yeah. Not but yet. The, the other thing is, of uh, course, I spoke to Christine uh, before coming in here. So okay. if there's anything, we'll go to the agro store in Achimota. Oh, that's and then we get, I was actually there today. We got uh, some simetia grass. Okay. And then like two kg because there's a place we have that we're trying to. That's great. You heard Jordan. It's a whole package we've got for you. Once you get the animal, it doesn't end there. We provide you with the feed, we provide you with the medications, the vaccinations. Trust me, it's a whole package. Hi Jordan, I want to say a big thank you for purchasing from us and for doing business with us. We are grateful. Thank you. We will all admit that yes, when it comes to livestock farming, South Africa is way ahead of us and there is so much that we want to learn. And that's why today I'm so excited to thank the ambassador, to thank the Ghanaian government, to thank the South African government that farming in Africa is grateful for this opportunity. When this free visa thing came, I was excited to jump on a flight, not with myself, with my business partner and with Godfrey as well and head straight to South Africa. Guess what? Because we actually had livestock waiting for us in South Africa that we needed to bring to Ghana. And gladly, I know all of you watching us that ordered goats from us have received yours. Those of you all the way even in Liberia, um, I know have received it and I'm so grateful. Those of you in Nigeria, I know you have received your goats as well and actually planning for the next consignment. I think these are some of the things that is going to take Africa forward. You know, myself, Godfrey and, and my business partner were able to go to South Africa, reconnect with all the breeders that we've been working with, visit a lot of institutions learn a lot from them. Godfrey was able to go as a student without a visa and learn for about I think four months doing different courses in goat farming before coming back and this is all what we were asking for this is all what we needed. I think the six months passport held really really broke my heart and everything that we've been doing in South Africa and therefore let's take advantage of this. I know we are planning to bring another shipment and my team and myself are planning to go back to South Africa and continue to do business in South Africa. As you guys know, we are also starting to practice AI. All the technology, all the tools that we are investing in is coming from South Africa. And therefore, I think this is such a great initiative that is going to help a lot of young and entrepreneurs and businessmen that want to do business within Africa, um, you know, move to the next level. I know Kenya now is on it, Rwanda is on it, and we want to see more of this because then we can expand and continue to do business. Um, during my time in South Africa, you know, we, as I said, we connected with a lot of the farmers. We also connected with a lot of stakeholders in the agriculture and filmed a lot of videos that we're going to start releasing them one by one, um, all the way to, you know, goat breeders, the Boa goat breeders, the Savannah goat breeders, Kalahari goat breeders. Um, 
pig breeders and then moving all the way to um you know genetic modifications um cements producing companies pig uh, producing companies um and so many more but you guys stay tuned all those videos are lined up we're gonna start releasing them step by step so that you guys um, can benefit from it so all these are good stuff and i can't wait to start sharing all the knowledge that i learned um, with you guys but one of the takeaway key takeaway that i want to give to all of you is i was so shocked to see how much we pamper the boa goats and the kalaharis in west africa as compared to how they are treated in south africa these goats lived in the middle of the mountains they have no shelter no pens there's no like specific feed grown for them these goats are eating tons in the wilderness and being chased by wild animals and they get to west africa and we build our you know my mom as my mom would say we build a story building for for these goats and they, they they enjoy and we are so careful and so on but if that's what works for us that's great but i think that's my key takeaway from my trip to south africa um, but this video is just basically to let you guys know that um south africa is free to Ghanaians if you want to go there you don't need a visa all what you need is your ticket i got to immigration super friendly they didn't even ask me where i was staying or how much money even if i had money to spend there or not they just saw my Ghanaian visa stamped it and then there i go i passed through right so i think that opportunity exists for all of us not just in the agri industry but any business that you want to do in south africa and it has already been a huge impact to us where i can pick my passport today and go now i also have a bank account in south africa right that i have money in so if i go to south africa i don't even need to like carry money with me right there's good car rentals the only thing is they drive on their right so if you're going to rent a car you have to be very careful i almost cry because um the first time i've done that in jamaica before but you know the first time the road was very narrow and everything but you know after a week i was i was on point and was very free driving around myself and you know as you guys know it's as developed as you can think of so um it's available to you guys if you want to go but thank you guys so much and i want to thank the Ghanaian government for closing this deal i want to thank the south african government and the embassy for supporting us to be able to do business it is very key to us in the agriculture industry that we're able to move and bring the technology that we don't have here in ghana from not just south africa but anywhere that we can thank you guys for watching and stay tuned follow this channel because we have about 20 different videos from south africa to share with you guys i'll see you in the next video